Hey everyone, Lou here. After being a Vocaloid fan since I was a teenager, you know, there comes a point where you see a lot, and I mean a lot of people misunderstanding the meaning of certain songs or even what Vocaloid is. It's understandable, of course. There's often a huge language barrier and younger Vocaloid fans who don't have time to read fan subs. Do you blame them? Kids these days have Roblox levels to play. At least, I think that's what kids do these days. Regardless, let's talk about some Vocaloid songs everyone misunderstands. Fair warning that due to copyright, I won't be able to play any of the songs in this video. A video struck by copyright often means that the algorithm will fuck it over for me, or it'll get banned worldwide, and since I want people to see this video, I sadly have to play it safe. However, to compensate, you'll hear the instrumentals in the background as background music, at least. Another thing to mention here is that these are interpretations of Vocaloid characters or the characters singing a song. I mean, we don't automatically assume Taylor Swift is a depressed person because she wrote a sad song about feeling like a cardigan under someone's bed. It's just a song, you know? Miku as a Vocaloid voice bank is quite literally up to anyone's interpretation, so there is no canon personality or story for Miku. Now, onto the video. Rolling Girl by Wawaka. Now yes, Wawaka's lyrics were always meant to be open to interpretation, so yes, the fan interpretation of this song isn't a bad one or an incorrect one. It also matches more with the fan-made music video, which is an afterthought, and like I said, fan-made to the original song. So, the fan-made music video is basically about a girl being bullied for having a possible mental illness and then taking her own life or finding someone who kills her or something. It's just a fan-made interpretation of the lyrics and is technically not actually what the song is about because this isn't an official video that Wawaka put up or anything. From my understanding of the approved English lyrics by Wawaka for the Project Diva games, the song actually seems to be about a girl struggling with her mental illness on a daily basis to a point where it feels like she's rolling or constantly spiraling in her unknown disorder. That talking in the song to me seems to be her inner thoughts, constantly trying to overcome her own issues, but in the end she just keeps rolling or spiraling as she desperately tries to hold her breath or try to calm down. Writing about mental health struggles isn't crazy for Wawaka. He often wrote quite a few songs about depression and anxiety since Unhappy Refrain and Unknown Mother Goose are both songs that tackle his own personal experiences with anxiety. At least to me, Unknown Mother Goose in particular reminding me of an experience of an anxiety attack with the way it spirals into a chaotic mess before finally calming down in the main verse with chaotic thoughts that then spiral into calmer ones, much like a panic attack. This could explain why Rolling Girl has such a chaotic melody flow in the first place. It's musically meant to represent how the girl is in a constant state of chaos due to her unknown mental health struggles. I mean, I know that's maybe looking too far into it since Wawaka was actually pretty vocal about his process for making Rolling Girl, and despite being such a massive hit, like many Vocaloid artists who end up making smash hits, he didn't really think too much about it and actually didn't have much musical experience when he wrote this song. Still, Wawaka was a genius in the industry, so maybe there was an intention there and he didn't see it as a big deal? Regardless, Rolling Girl is about a girl struggling with a mental health disorder, but in the end, with her taking her own life, being bullied, or someone taking her own life is more open to interpretation to the song and not something concrete. Bacterial Contamination by Kani Miso P now, this is one song that shows up on literally every creepy Vocaloid song playlist from, like, 2014. Don't get me wrong, I fucking love this song and its music video, but I don't really find this very creepy. The mouthy schoolgirls are super gross, though, because I've always had a thing for being really creeped out by elongated human bodies. Blame the enigma of Amigata Fault by Junji Ito for that one. Anyway, many people take this song quite literally in that this girl in the song 
is the character in the music video who looks like if Hatsune Miku went through a B-horror movie experiment and that she's infected by some kind of bacterial disease and is purposefully spreading it around for funsies. That's honestly incorrect. The character in the song is Kalne Ka, a derivative of Hatsune Miku made by Daino. He's an extremely talented artist who loves making robot and bug-like creatures, and is honestly a pretty talented artist, so he's pretty great. So Kalne Ka is basically his interpretation of Hatsune Miku in his preferred style of bugs and machines, and obviously Daino made the music video. He also has his own interpretation of Gakupo, by the way, in this style as well, in the song Nehan Shika on his channel. Honestly, a really awesome song and music video, so I highly recommend checking it out. Now to the song itself. The song uses bacteria and disease themes to interpret bullying. Kalne Ka used in this video can also be a metaphor for how the girl interprets herself as an infectious monster. The girl in this song is bullied so bad she ends up becoming a bully herself or contaminated as a way of protecting herself because she feels like everyone hates her. In the song, she discusses meeting a girl who showed her true kindness and contaminating her, aka bullying her, just to make herself feel better, and it was to a point where the kind girl took her own life, and it only makes the girl feel even worse about herself. The song is a really, really smart way of showing how in times of abuse and bullying, oftentimes we end up becoming the abuser or bully ourselves as a terrible coping mechanism. And in that way, it shows that bullying and abuse really is like a bacterial contamination and that it just keeps spreading and spreading. And if you don't do anything to actually clean it at all, it just ends up becoming a cycle. The song basically ends with her becoming the top bully so no one can hurt her, feeling like she's cured of the bacteria, aka bullying because no one else is bullying her anymore. However, because she's finally at the top now, everyone is now hurting themselves or others to try and compensate for the pain instead. It leaves her alone and in pain, but in a way she feels like she has to be okay with it because that's just the cycle of bullying. Not only is this song badass, but the lyrics to me, at least, are honestly genius. And it is a shame a lot of people take the lyrics way too literally because of the also brilliant music video. I mean, yes, anti-bullying songs can be a little cheesy and on the nose, but to frame this one in an almost horror-esque style is just brilliant to me. I'm Sorry I'm Sorry by Kikuo P. I did ask around on Reddit for some help because obviously I'm not the consensus on the Vocaloid community as a whole here, and this was one I saw pop up a lot when I asked in a Reddit post. The main issue of misunderstanding with this song comes from TikTok, the reigning king of misunderstanding literally basic knowledge where a lot of young children use this song for cutesy yandere videos. And I think a lot of them assume this song is your generic yandere song because Kikuo's music does admittedly come off that way, and it's kids not googling the lyrics. Which, to be fair, I don't really blame kids for that because it's just something that happens with kids. I mean, do you know how many kids I knew back then who were singing S&M by Rihanna without knowing the actual meaning of the song? Not to mention the amount of kids who think WAP means wet and splashy. I think what didn't help this case either with I'm sorry, I'm sorry was that everyone apparently told kids not to look up the lyrics, which only further pushed the idea that the song is just a generic stabby yandere. I mean, you tell a kid something is really bad and they're just gonna assume it's just like a bunch of stabbings or something. What is the song actually about then? A girl being assaulted by her father on a daily basis. She feels disgusted with herself about it, which the song uses cannibalism and filth metaphors to describe how she feels about herself, but also has been abused into feeling like she needs to be sorry for going against what her father's wishes are. Her brother or a brotherly figure tries to help her, but I can never tell if he ends up abusing her too, or the girl mistakes his kindness as abuse because she's just so broken. That's like the only part of the song I'm a little lost on, but maybe it's vague on purpose. The girl then returns home to continue being abused by her father, except now he brought his friends to abuse his daughter too where she apologizes inside for even thinking about trying to escape and not being a good girl for her father. 
Kikuo is known for writing songs about childhood trauma, abuse, and experiences. This just happens to be one of the far darker songs he's written though. Like, this is seriously one of the most fucked up Vocaloid songs lyrics-wise. To a point where I can't read anything beyond the main verse out loud. Because otherwise this video would easily get age-restricted. I think the only other song where I've had this happen was with the Kitsune and the Spider by Masa Works. Despite its incredibly fucked up nature though, it's actually one of my favorite Kikuo songs. I love the dubstep beat of the main verse sounding like a lullaby and the way Kikuo builds a roller coaster in Miku's voice throughout the song. Some will say Kikuo is a fucked up man for writing a song like this or say it's problematic to write songs like this, but I disagree. Call me problematic, but I always believe art doesn't always reflect the artist. I mean, yes, there are some instances where art absolutely reflects the artist, but largely I don't think it says anything about an artist. Like, I've written OCs who have been serious abusers and dickheads, but it doesn't mean I'm a serial abuser or dickhead. Does that make sense? Creativity is weird, man. I think these three songs show that sometimes art, no matter authorial intent, somehow always get lost in translation or time. That, or when a fandom starts off with a bunch of teenagers who don't speak Japanese, you know you're in for a wild fucking ride, that's for sure. That said, I don't think it's wrong or bad to misinterpret these songs either. Art is art, and I always believe there's no right or wrong answer to understanding art. If something draws the stereotypical fruit bowl artwork, it's up to the viewer to view if the fruit bowl is a depiction of the downfall of humanity or just some nice looking fruit. That said, that'll be it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought of these songs before this video or if there are any Vocaloid songs you think some people misunderstand. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!